Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can tell by the titles of today's video, there is a lot that we are going to be talking about. And this afternoon, we're going to be diving into the details of Saturn retrograde, specifically for Saturn retrograde in 2024. Now there is a lot of information to unfold and Saturn is easily one of the most notoriously and misunderstood signs in the entire zodiac. Whenever people bring up Saturn, they think doom and gloom, they think karma, which yes, karma is a big part of what Saturn represents and what Saturn rules, but what does that mean for you and how is this going to impact you for good, for bad, and all in between. So I'm gonna be pulling the chart up and we're also gonna be breaking down not only Saturn retrograde for us for 2024, but what this means for each of the signs. So if I were you, what I would do is in this little quick hiatus, this little break where we kind of switch off from talking, go ahead and pull up your astrology chart, your natal chart. I personally love to use astro.com. Go ahead and see what Saturn rules within your chart, where Saturn is currently transiting, and this will give me enough time to pull up my charts so we can link up and talk all about it. Give me two seconds and I'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, so hopefully you have your chart pulled up. I have mine pulled up as well as my notes. Let's go ahead and dive completely in. So first things first, what you need to know, the good, the bad, the ugly, is a little bit about me. Why I'm starting off with this is because I am very, very specific, I'm very, very detailed, and for that reason, this can impact you, especially if you're taking this information, you're learning from it, you're growing from it, and you're applying it to your own life. Do remember that this is a very specific reading for a very general audience and where these transits and how these transits will unfold within your life is going to be different. So do your best to follow along. If there's any questions that is that you have as we are talking, please let me know, know down in the comments and I will do my best to answer as many as possible. With that being said, we're going to start off talking about the generalizations of what it is that you can expect. And of course, being triple Virgo, I'm going to be as specific and as professional perfectionist as possible. That is just my way. And then you are going to take that information and apply it to your natal chart, your astrology chart. Also, you're going to see that I'm going to break up this video into different timestamps, which is going to allow you to check in, to clock in specifically with your sun and your rising sign. That way you can see and reconfirm where this transit is happening for you within your life. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's the full breakdown. And if you want to go a little further into what it is that you can expect, especially when it comes to energy and how this energy is going to unfold, I will have extended readings for each of the signs, the zodiac signs and their rising sign down below so you can catch up and uh, support yourself with that information as well because I don't just do astrology here. I also dive very deep into in, in the intuition that is brought up through the tarot. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. If you see me looking over to my left, it's because my chaotic laptop is here. And if you see me looking down, it's because the chart is right here in front of me. If you see me rubbing my nose, it's usually because that's my angels and my guides speaking directly to me. That's always been a sign. And then oftentimes there's a little itch or a little tickle on my nose that has nothing to do with my angels and my guides, but it's just human the human body doing what it does okay so first things first yes saturn retrograde is happening this year 2024 from june 29th to november 15th now that is a huge chunk of time well it is a significant chunk of time that we are going to be feeling the retrograde influence of this planet um, that's about five months. Well, it's four and a half, but if you think about it, it's five months because with any type of retrograde or any type of planet, whether it's moving retrograde or moving direct, it is like all of us. It can be, it needs time because it wakes up feeling disoriented or it goes to sleep feeling groggy. So think about if a planet is moving direct, which means that it's moving forward with the, within the astrology chart, that means that it's in forward motion, it's feeling strong for the most part, depending on what sign it's transiting, because the planets do choose favorites, they play favorites, and they thrive in some, si some signs and they fall apart in, some, in others. It all depends on the planet itself. But 
think about it, this planet is transiting through one of the zodiac signs, one of the astrological signs, and moving forward, it's just progressing, it's focusing on its intended goal, and then at some point in every season of our lives, regardless if you're a human, if you're a planet, if you're a plant, if you're an animal, there's gonna be the seasons of your life where you get sleepy and you have to go within for a multitude of reasons, right? When this happens, our energy, when it was once focused on moving forward, it starts to shift and doesn't show up in the same way that it once was. So in this case, when there's a planet that goes retrograde, the energy that was moving forward starts to go either inside or it becomes blocked or stagnated in some way. And that's when we can see restrictions or complications or maybe, depending on the circumstances, a freeing of that energy that we didn't experience when the planet was moving direct. Now that's exactly what it is that we can see and expect when we're watching Saturn transit, specifically this time, 2024, through the sign of Pisces. Now, Saturn in general connects us to reality checks of all kinds. Where this reality check tends to show up happens to be in the sign that it's transiting, AKA the sign that it is that it's moving, uh, moving through. And then also, if you wanna go a little deeper into the root of yourself, it is really important and I highly encourage that you look to see what Saturn rules within your chart, but what house and what sign it falls in in your natal chart. This is where, again, you're gonna see those reality checks. Saturn loves to push us to mature, to grow up, to face things, whether it feels comforting to us or destabilizing or shocking to us. It also delves and um, shares out karma. Now, when I talk about karma, this is going to be, and I say this as a perfectionist, as inaccurately as possible because I, I like to get my percentages down pat, but for lack of an inability of my own spiritual growth and journey, I don't know if it's 50, 50% here or if there's a, like a, if it's less, if it's not 50, 50, but for today's, for today's video and for where I stand right now in 2024, I'm going to say 50% of our karma when we hear that word has to do with past lives and the effect like the cause and effect of the lives that we once lived before our present life now which is completely for the most part outside of our control it's up to you guys if you decide that you want to believe in that or not but regardless the other 50 percent that i want to talk about with karma is the cause and effect that we accrue in our current lives this means that these are the decisions, whether for good intention or bad intention that we have made in the past that are coming to show up and reveal the, uh, the reward or punishment based upon exact, like what we did. So that's what I mean by karma. So, cause sometimes when I talk about karma in with my clients or on YouTube or in my regular personal life, people can get a little triggered and thrown off by that word because they're like well what the f like i didn't intentionally try to hurt and harm anyone why am i being punished it feels like punishment try not to look at it that way some of this karma some of these lessons are not things that we actively chose for ourselves but they're things that we have to understand and learn we get the opportunity to live through those lessons to grow through those lessons to challenge those lessons and allow them to shape us up into hopefully fingers crossed being a better human being keeping in mind that none of us none of us are perfect so with this karma we can see a twisting and a crossing of paths of people energies jobs circumstances that are here to teach us lessons lessons that again help us to grow um this could and then with saturn showing up here retrograde again june 29th through november 15th like the middle of uh, november this could easily bring back past karmic relationships commitments bonds that you have have yet to handle it to put it into full like clothes or that person or that thing that's involved has a little bit more cleaning up to do on their for their soul for the sake of their soul. The other thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about with Saturn and what it rules is it connects us immediately 
to career, to reputation, but also the weight, the magnitude of life and what life brings for us. That can be a lot. Sometimes this is the expectations that are brought on to us from our family, from our upbringing, because if you think about it, the 10th house, which Saturn naturally rules, is at the very top of the astrology chart. The fourth house is the very opposite at the very bottom of the astrology chart. The fourth house represents the home, the upbringing, the root, the family unit, the family dynamic. And that, that in itself helps to water, to feed the branches, the stalk of the tree up into the branches. And that helps us in the weight of responsibility and the burden that we put on ourselves, the types of careers and jobs that it is that we feel drawn to, the ways that it is that that we feel responsible for healing and helping the world, and ultimately our reputation and our legacy that we leave behind when we pass on into the next life with hopefully (laughs) closing out that circle of the karma that it is that we dealt with in in this life. The other, so that's heavy, that's heavy right there. And this is connected to all of us. Some of us more heavier than others, but again, that's when you wanna look at your natal chart, your personal chart, your astrology chart, and see what that is bringing to you. So next thing I wanna dive into is our responsibilities, our burdens, the things that we have committed ourselves to. This could be something as simple and as obvious as the commitment to pay off your mortgage, the commitment to pay off debt, the commitment to a marriage or a relationship. For everyone, it's different, or it can include all of the above. So these are the things, again, that we said yes to in this life. And then once we said yes to it, it came with its strings attached to it. And then when those strings get pulled, we come like a puppet (laughs) kind of dancing back and saying, all right, this is when my bill is due. This is what my duty is. This is my obligation. Let me fulfill it or let me put it off or let me stick my hand head in the sand and not deal with it at all, which is very, very Pisces, which is where Saturn just happens to be transiting through the sign of Pisces, which is the next part that we need to talk about with Saturn, not only retrograde, but its current transit through the sign of Pisces. Now, Pisces represents the energy that Saturn is currently swimming through. And I use the word swimming very specific because Pisces rules the ocean, depth, and uh, the sea, the depths of ourselves, whether it be subconscious or whether it is that you take a vacation, you're in Costa Rica right now, and you're vibing on the banks of a beautiful ocean looking out at the horizon. So Pisces, again, is where Saturn is currently transiting. This happened March 7th, 2023, and is still happening and unfolding until, excuse me, May 24th of 2025. There is gonna be a moment where Saturn is gonna uh, transition out of signs. It will then re-enter back into the sign of Pisces once again, August 31st until 2025. Uh, in the year 2025 until February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, 2026. So that is a significant length of time. Saturn, again, you should know, is one of the slowest moving astrology planets within the astrology chart. I was going to say astrological planets, but it's like, duh. (laughs) Of course, that's what that means. It's easily one of the slowest moving planets within our astrology charts next to Pluto and Uranus and uh, Jupiter following far behind because Jupiter moves a little faster. So again, like what I was saying, as Saturn is transiting through the sign of Pisces, you have to give yourself a whole lot of patience in your life and and where this this energy is gonna rule. Not only do you want to give this transit patience because you have no choice (laughs) but to give it patience because it's going to rule through your life or rule that area of your life, But Saturn doesn't dissipate and disappear once it's finished a transit. If anything, it just takes this energy and moves on to the very next thing, the next sign, the next area of your house, the next area of your life, the next big chunk piece of the pie of of your life as a whole. So regardless, Saturn is going to be moving point blank period, whatever, wherever it trans, well, it's going to be there regardless. So you don't necessarily want to rush it through each of the different seasons of your life, you kind of want to have this ability to kind of surrender and accept the current situation. And again, try to be open and um, allow yourself to pivot as needed as this transit is unfolding 
before it moves on to something else because not only and this is a more serious moment here not only is saturn transiting all by itself but it is impacting the other planets which means that it can be fighting with another planet for example what if it was fighting with pluto the further it went along direct that can bring bring a lot of toughness and intensity what if it was conjunct neptune what if it was opposing uranus these are things that in this moment you it's better to feel grateful and to embrace it than to rush it than to hope to rush it through you know your chart only to put you in a predicament that may have you more bound up more conflicted more like not at peace just trust me trust me trust me on that one take each transit one moment as at, 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 at a time if you can so with this energy again kind of circling it back and keeping us on point because i can pivot and derail with this transit again saturn transiting through the sign of pisces we got to be really careful about the limitlessness of this energy that pisces brings and the flip side of that how saturn loves to restrict to, to confine to contain now this is where we need to really put a pin in boundaries, right? When we think of the word boundaries, we think about the line that we do not cross between ourselves and maybe another person, but this really needs to be applied for wherever Saturn is currently transiting within your zodiac sign, within your astrological sign. For example, let's say Saturn was tran going retrograde in your 12th house, this, the house that rules your psychology, that rules the undoing of your mental and emotional well-being. It also rules prisons and hospitals and institutions and secrets. When, Pis when Saturn is transiting through the sign of Pisces through your 12th, you want to give a lot of patience and a lot of um, like understanding and being open to these lessons these bound of what, where these boundaries need to be applied because what if... The way that you live your life, the routines, because that's the very opposite uh, and the root of what is contributing to your, your mental and emotional well-being is the six, your routines, your, your regimen, your hygiene, right? How well you take care of the little bitty bits of your mind, soul, body, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't have healthy boundaries with what it is that you are consuming with, let's say if you are taking medication to help you with certain things, you could create a big a bigger problem for that mental aspect. So oftentimes, remember, like I said, with boundaries, sometimes we think about applying it just in the form of people and our relationship with others, but also look at how these boundaries protect and provide for that chunk of your life, making sure that you are taking care of the 12th house matters and that you're not allowing outside influences to negate or to diminish, to put, to set you up for failure if you are actively trying to work on bettering that aspect, that part of yourself, okay? So with this being said, or with that being said, Saturn through Pisces will always, always, always test those boundaries, right? Another way that, or another element that Pisces naturally rules is our spirituality. It is our spiritual practice, our faith, energies, vibes, aura. And when Saturn is retrograde, it can make us need to kind of stop and reconsider and to reevaluate, to rebuild, to reestablish how we take care of those aspects within ourselves and are there boundaries that need to be reinforced are there boundaries that need to be moved are there parts of yourself that are more now open to being vulnerable because you've been working on yourself and your own healing everyone's going to be different and again we are going to break that energy down further for each of the astrological signs exactly where saturn transit through pisces is happening within your chart from a rising from your um, astrology rising sign and then if you want to go a little deeper again the extended reading will be found down below so globally i really want you guys to look at um i really want you guys to look at like the the energy of like compassion and if we have compassion fatigue if we are concerned with the wellness of other people do we dissociate do we disconnect 
um, with the uh, influence of other people. I love to use a very famous Pisces, uh, Jesus Christ, as an example here. Don't click out for those of you guys that don't vibe with Christianity or whatever the case is. We're just using it as a metaphor and as an example. Try to think meta. Try to go big with this, right? So think about what Jesus Christ represented. It represented the, the person who was the martyr, the person who represented the image of God, this ultimate higher power, walking on earth that represented the most compassionate selfless giving side of ourselves that we can encourage ourselves to reflect right um putting all of our religious practices and beliefs and faith putting all of that aside for just a second just kind of looking at how this metaphor kind of shows up in our lives this is something that as saturn is transiting through pisces retrograde right for 2024 is this an energy that we can embody within ourselves in our day-to-day -day routine when we watch the news, when we see our neighbors suffering and struggling? Um, another thing is to look at how, even with social media, how the images that we are consuming, the things that we see, how it seems harmless at the time, but does it actually disconnect us from feeling things and even our sense of humor and how we would normally approach the things that used to shock us? Now it's almost like we can flick through it really quickly or we're constantly being bombarded and con consuming it. This is what I think that we got, we need to really be careful about, especially as Saturn is retrograde through Pisces, because it needs to bring us back. Its intention is to bring us back to the sides of ourselves that are more compassionate and not so disconnected from humanity. We This is an energy that can be very similar to the martyr, that can be very selfless, that wants to help others, that has a big heart and wants to provide for the better, for the good of all of humanity, right? But there has to also be like a boundary there because on the flip side, it becomes a problem when we become the victim ourselves, when we become powerless, when we get beat up on and destroyed or all of these things for the, for the, not for the greater good, but when humanity turns on us. So there's this need to kind of find the balance, right? In our role on here on earth of showing up for others, understanding or seeking to understand the suffering of other people, but also trying to figure out or to fit in, like, how can I contribute to this? And how is it impacting me? How can I help if I want to help at all, if there's any way that I can help? And it can be something as simple as energy work, energy healing, praying, setting intention, globally for your neighbors for your friends not announcing it to the world but something that is that you do in private because think about this think about this pisces naturally rules the 12th house the house of secrecy the house of um like th the places that we go to practice our spiritual our spirituality and in 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 our faith and in, in private so it doesn't need to be blasted out to the entire world that this is exactly what it is that you're doing. It doesn't need to be shared with anyone. It needs to be this intimate, intimate, genuine, authentic act of selflessness that you may be giving through energy work, through sending pos positive attention, through prayer, writing a petition, whatever it is. Every single one of us has different paths along the the, the journey of life that reflect our faith, our beliefs, and ultimately hopefully kind of bringing us all together so that we feel spiritually connected or energetically connected having said that again boundaries is very important because this is where the intuitives the sensitives the psychics the gifted can feel easily overwhelmed and pisces energy is very very sensitive it's very gifted to say the very least whether you are a pisces person moon sun rising whatever right <laughs> At the end of the day, you do have something, Pisces rules something within your chart. Some of us are more sensitive than others. We have to be really careful of our, again, how you are taking care of your mental, emotional, and spiritual self if you are practicing healthy and clean practices when it comes to your faith, when your your routine, your religion, your regimen, at your altar, et cetera, et cetera, all of those things. Um yeah, just making sure that you're you're keeping those areas clean. If not, what's going to happen is spiritually, psychologically, you can feel and you will feel the negative influence of an, an imbalance within that practice. So 
if you guys would like to see a video on that, uh, making sure that you know your how to take care of your altar, how to cl uh, spiritually cleanse yourself, your space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, I can I would be more than happy to do that video for you guys. Just let me know down in the comments. Having said that, though, I do want to share with you guys a more specific example about again like our health and this twelfth six health. 12th and 6th house connection, this metaphor, this example that is I'm giving, I think it's going to be in a way that many of us will be able to understand. Think about how in our day-to-day -day life, um, our, our, our health, right, our routine, our regimen, our diet, our lifestyle, naturally ruled by 6th house, which is ruled by Virgo. Hopefully it's whole, hopefully it's wholesome, hopefully it's clean eating, good eating. Um, if that is your practice every day, you're drinking enough water, you're not stressing yourself out, you're not over consuming anything to any excess, then you have nothing to worry about when it comes to your future, when it comes to your health. Why? Because you are doing the right things to take care of your physical body, your routine, your regimen, your hygiene are things that are accurately taking care of your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual body. Now, wow, guys. So I was really on a roll. And then all of a sudden, my camera was like, and scene. And just kind of like went kaput. But what it was that I was trying to say, and I'm going to try to pick off right where I was let, kind of left off, which is talking about, again, how if we're not taking care of our physical bodies, the sixth house and our routine and our regimen, and we don't have healthy boundaries with that, then obviously there's going to be the impact, the cause and effect. Twelfth house, we're going to find ourselves in the hospital or institutionalized or alone, abandoned, having mental uh, collapse, all those things. And we don't really want that. So the reason why I brought that up, again, is to talk about the importance of boundaries, to talk about uh, that karma, the cause and effect, and the lessons, and to give you an example of how all of these planets and these houses, how they really do connect, how they do align. And again, it's always for our highest and greatest good. So with this, with that being said, I really do want to encourage you to uh, look at the lessons again of, of Saturn and how it's transiting through Pisces and definitely try to fold in to apply that cause and effect that... Um, the karma, the lessons, and pay attention to your subconscious, your healing, your psychology, because naturally, Pisces naturally rules the 12th house. And regardless of where it is that it's transiting, transiting within your natal chart, whether, you know, that be the actual transit or where it's sitting in your natal chart, we want to look after those aspects of ourselves, okay? So regardless, well, not regardless, going a little further in today's lesson and talking about um, Saturn as a whole, transiting through Pisces, we always want to keep in mind that Saturn loves to make commitments. It loves to make contractual agreements and sign big deals and contracts. Now, this is one of those times where superficially speaking, I do not think that it is a great time to do any of those things. Um, I really don't. Usually we end up kind of regretting it or there has to be some type of uh, like retrieval of what it is that we signed. We have to kind of go back and kind of fix it, make it right, make it better. Or there is no follow through ultimately with what it is that we are making a, a commitment and a bond to. So for example, if this is, uh, let's say Saturn is transiting through your house of friendships, connections, social media, you know, those types of areas. And in the sign of Pisces, you may find that there's this desire, there's this need, there's the, there's the wish to make these connections, these um, plans with friends, friendships, because that's what the 11th house rules. It seems good in theory, it seems good in the moment, but ultimately, there is no follow through. You don't end up seeing the effect of it. It was more of a dream than a reality. Why? Because Saturn retrograde kind of killed and crushed the the the, the realness, the truthness of that being able to um, come to light and come to fruition. Pisces also energy is very much known for being a daydreamer and having more dreams, pipe dreams, and actual 
plans to fulfill things, it also has a really interesting way of being disconnected from reality and like what is reality, but it's our ability to kind of follow through, to be dedicated, to be committed and to have the effort to sustain things for the long haul. It's beautiful have to, to have that dream and that vision, but ultimately if you don't have the capacity to be mature, to handle the, the, the weight and the responsibility of it ultimately, then maybe I don't say what's the point of it, but where did that dream and that vision go? So if, if Saturn is really teaching you about your own dreams, about these own visions, your own visions that you have for your life, um, about, you know, life or about relationships or about setting intention, or about putting yourself out there and whatever that dream, whatever that goal is, then to use this as a time to kind of reflect, to go back and to fulfill that promise or to make steps towards it. Now, this is where I really want to talk to you guys about the more heavier aspects of what Saturn transit through Pisces and Saturn retrograde transit through Pisces can bring. Saturn is known for, again, its responsibility and how we handle that responsibility. Saturn is also known for the hard work and dedication, whether it be where we apply this 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 hard work to the lessons in karma or whether it be hard work on a goal, our career, our job, ourselves. When Saturn is retrograde, I do want to say that it depends. It depends on the person and it also and how I say this with a disclaimer of this information that I'm about to give you is from my own research, personal research, not only from my own astrology chart, but from my family, my friends, and many clients as we broke down uh, Saturn transit through the years and even Saturn return aspects and looking at their actual Saturn return, looking at Saturn uh, retrograde and act and looking at Saturn transit and seeing after the years have gone by how that energy impacted in before, in the middle of, and in hindsight when your vision is 2020. So this is where this information is coming from. Also, I have learned astrology. One of the main, one of the really strong uh, ways that I learn astrology is through practice and by looking, diving through and like scouring through um, astrology forums and looking at people who have had their charts up since like 2012. And them, them, strangers, complete strangers, looking back and saying, holy sh, you know. When this Saturn retrograde happened in this part of my life, now that I look back, that's when I lost my husband. That's when I lost my mom. That's when I built my business. That's when there's all of these stories that tell of triumph as well as incredible falls, fall from grace, you know, this fall from grace or lessons that people have lived through. And when we look at the astrology chart, all of us astrologers, we we give gratitude because we're like, thank God, there, there's this information that we can live from. Thank you for being the chicken, the example that we're all learning and living from. And we apply it, we remember it, and then we give it to our clients as we move forward. So um, having said that, this information that I'm about to give you is very important because this is telling us um, that Saturn, when it's retrograde, it depends on the person, and this is where this is very specific, general but very specific. It depends on the person if you are able to work hard through the Saturn retrograde transit or if you will feel uh, crushed by it. I almost want to say untimely. Like if it feels like, like the stress, the burden is just like poorly timed for your life and you just have like everything within your life and through with your experience is trying to teach you to kind of thug it out. This can be tough, especially for people who are going through health challenges, mental health challenges, marriages are breaking, uh, disconnection from siblings, uh, part partnerships, friendships. Those areas of our lives can be really challenged because they can be very, very sensitive. Our values can be challenged. Again, we're gonna break down every single one of the zodiac signs from their rising sign and see exactly where this energy will show up. But everyone's gonna be different. Sometimes when Saturn goes retrograde within, uh, within our within our charts, it can bring out uh, the best when it comes to our circumstances, when it comes to how we feel about things, and it eases up the karma, we feel like we get a break from it. 
And then there are those who feel completely and utterly crushed by this. Do you know that if you are someone who is feeling crushed, that you have about five months of this crushation <laughs> happening within your life, which means that just like everything else, this too shall pass. For those of you guys that fare very well during a Saturn retrograde transit or this Saturn retrograde season, do know that this too shall pass. So with this information and with this energy, we don't want to just allow it to float away from our fingertips like a butterfly. We want to still challenge ourselves to still kind of push ourselves and make sure that even though we're feeling good, that we are still taking accountability for our actions, doing what it is that we need to do during this, this time, this season and applying ourselves because everything is temporary and you try to extract from the moment as much as, as it is that you can. Okay, I do want to tell you that this transit typically it, it will force you to work. Um, however, th with that with that feeling of forcing you to work, it can feel like stress. It can feel like a burden, but ultimately it does pay off. It can be agonizing, though, and I just really want to like be clear about that as well. So um, now I think it's time where we are able to break down each of the zodiac signs and how Saturn retrograde through Pisces is going to be impacting you. This is a wonderful time actually to take a pause, to take a sip of water, and to re-up on your tea, your notes, go walk the dog, come back, subscribe to the YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up. Girl, boy, honey, whatever it is that you got to do, let's do it. I'm going to personally take a little sip and then we'll go in with the rest of the reading. All right, Boo Bear. So we have <clears throat> officially taken a sip of tea, water for me per personally, and I also took this time to powder my nose. I believe that it is official that we are ready. It is time to dive into how Saturn transit is going to impact each of the zodiac signs. Now for this section of our deep dive into Saturn retrograde in 2024 in the sign of Pisces, I um, lost my train of thought. Oh, I'm gonna encourage you to look at your rising sign first. Your rising sign is very important because it is going to show you, for the purposes of today's video, exactly where Saturn retrograde is most likely transiting. And the reason why I say most likely is because your degree of your rising sign, it can totally shift the your astrology chart, your natal chart, so that for the majority of the collective that has that rising sign, they will be experiencing the same or similar energies as you. But for you, you may, if you're like a later degree, you may be a few steps behind and you may be a house behind. So this is, again, one of those reasons why I'm really telling you that it's kind of important for you to pull up your, your natal chart, your astrology chart not sponsors, not sponsored in today's video, not at all. You guys hear me saying this all the time. I am a truth teller. I'm not here to bullshit you. Astro.com is the astrology uh, platform that I use all the time, all the time for years um, that I use this astrology website for my clients, for myself, for my friends, family, strangers on the road. It is just my go-to. However, I do understand because I've had a few friends tell me just when we're on the phone, they're like, yo, astrology or astro.com is, is dope, but it's overwhelming and it is too much for the regular person who doesn't understand astrology in the way that you do. But you wouldn't know that girl because you are not from a beginner's mindset. You're advanced you know in your astrology studies and your knowledge so thank you for those of you guys that do tell me the truth and for the friends that have told me that i do understand i having said that really 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 stay in caution right and in a, a really strong realm of caution because there are a lot of apps out there that will tell you that this is where the uh, saturn is transiting through your natal chart or through your life and it is unbelievably wrong <laughs> like not it's like I don't have the sense of humor to laugh at that. I can laugh at a lot of things, inappropriate and appropriate. That is where I draw the line. I hate, I cannot stand an app that is 
designed for astrology and is just completely inaccurate or a website that is top on the Google list and is so, so conflictingly, ridiculously wrong. It is a personal thing for me, but again, I've dedicated my life to the study of astrology. And uh, so it's, there's that. So I'm just putting out that disclaimer. Having said that, let's go ahead and remember that this is specific, but very general and a way to narrow it down uh, closer and as perfect as we can get is by using something as similar as astro.com. And the way to get it even further tight is to hire an astrologer, an actual professional astrologer, a trained astrologer, someone who has years under their belt, who will be able to explain it to you. Right now, I'm currently pregnant (laughs) with child and doing my best to kind of take my time through the readings that are currently booked, as well as custom candles and intention oils. And um, I'm not open to clients right now, but if you would like to, you can visit my website, BahadiLife.com, and sign up for Bahati, the newsletter, and you'll be able to get some information on when those readings open up, when that will happen. But um, as far as, as far as we can tell, you know, as as far as doctors can tell, I will be pregnant (laughs) until the end of, almost the end of the year. And at that point, we're celebrating the holidays. So, wow, can you? can believe it like weird a concept okay um all right having said that guys let's go ahead and dive right in if you are aries rising then uh saturn's transit through pisces i almost said capricorn but that's just me thinking about capricorn right now um saturn's transit through pisces is gonna be happening through your 12th house very very interesting because remember i kind of was talking about that a little bit using that example as a metaphor, but really kind of think back on those examples that I shared in today's video. This is dealing with immediately your subconscious, your healing psychology, and um, amplifies amplifies this energy even further. You are more vulnerable with this type of transit than um, than the others. The next the next zodiac signs that are going to be just like greatly impacted are going to be the mutable signs. Um, it, it is what it is. So I really want you guys to really look out for your mental and emotional and spiritual, physical well-being. You got to be, there's going to there's gonna be practices that you are going to want to take into consideration and apply that I, I want to say like private and secrets, like secrecy, but I don't see it in a way that's negative unless that's your intention and that's your vibe and that's what you're doing. I'm not here to judge. I'm just the messenger here and just saying, like, if I was looking at your chart, I'd be like, okay. I'd have my glasses on and I would pull them down. I'd look at you dead in your eyes and be like, okay, so tell me what this is. You don't have to, but uh, BFF just wants to know, right? So there might be the part of you that may be dealing with secrets that you are holding on to, that you are harboring, that you are dealing with. It could have to deal with secrets coming out from yourself, from others that you are confronting or being confronted by. On the flip side, this could have to do with things that you are doing just privately for yourself, kind of disconnecting from life or maybe reality. This is another transit. I don't know if I said this in the meat of today's video, but this is one of those transits that for the collective as a whole, we can find ourselves dissociating and disconnecting, burying our head in the sand. This is one of those times for you, Aries, rising, where you may find yourself wanting to do the same thing. This is a wonderful time that if you were someone who was prioritizing mental and emotional well-being, going to therapy, going to counseling, journaling, private practices, then you might be revisiting that as well. Hospitals, institutions, prisons, jails, those tend to um, sneak into our lives. However, do not panic, (laughs) do not panic. If you are not doing anything wrong, you should be fine, right? You should be fine. If not, then chances are, again, it's that karma, that cause and effect, and you may need to use your spirituality, your faith, your practice to help you kind of navigate through times where you might feel imprisoned in some way, shape, or form. So again, I'm not saying this to freak you out. I'm just telling you the truth of how this energy can come through. Also, definitely focusing on your healing. If you feel frazzled, overwhelmed, overstimulated, bombarded, this is a sign that something in the the small details the small bits and pieces of your life needs to be 
fixed, healed, taken care of, and make that your responsibility instead of continuing to disconnect, associate, and run away from, or like seeing the bigger the like constantly seeing the bigger picture that you can't see the smaller bits and pieces of how it's making the bigger picture uh sick in some way shape or form okay moving on to the next zodiac sign taurus rising this the saturn retrograde through pisces is going to be happening through your 11th house of friendships social networking um groups communities and even social media interesting with this because this can really challenge your friendships especially friendships that you've had for a long time like long time coming it could be long 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 time friends friends from childhood or close friends you may find yourself wanting to pull away from your desk pulling away from your office or whatever it is that's been distracting you your mom duties or dad duties whatever it is that consumes your day-to-day -day and begin to prioritize seeking community, a tribe, connections. You may also find that you may be wanting to reprioritize and reshift your focus back to career, job, hobbies that were using social media to pro promote them and to amplify your voice and the gifts that is that you give. So keep an eye out for that. Friendships, again, like I said, they do tend to be tested during this time. Also, if you are have already been tested, this is those friendships kind of coming back and becoming more of a priority, or you start to realize, this is my boundary, this is who I am now, this is where we've grown, and can you guys, can you, can those friendships, can they, can they pick up where they were left off, or is it just different forever? And different can be good, but different can be weird. You know, so definitely keep me posted. For the next zodiac sign, we have Gemini. Gemini, you are going to be feeling this amplified in your 10th house of career, responsibility, and um, like obligation, duty, your legacy that is that you leave for the rest of the world. So for this reason, you may find yourself wanting to look for a different job, a different career. But when I say job, I mean like what you see yourself doing. I don't want to say for the rest of your life, but maybe for some of you guys, you are really committed to um, a career or a type of purpose or destiny, like your legacy, as far as how you share your energy, your gifts with the world, with others. Um, for others, you may just find yourself kind of conflicted as far as your purpose here and trying to root yourself in who you are now and how you wish to give give to the world and what that would look like. So for someone here, you may find that you may, again, find like a pivot in your career. For others, you may find that uh, you may be taking a, a break away from your career, whether it be using that PTO time, going on a vacation, whatever the case is. If there's certain responsibilities, burdens, and uh, restrictions that like you feel restricted in your work your career your boss with your employees your co-workers the dynamic that's happening here you may find yourself start really feeling the call the need to reprioritize or restructure or to revisit the boundaries so that you are not feeling violated overextended or whatever the case is everyone is going to be different with this type of transit Gemini also it's interesting you may Gemini rising you may find um, you may be butting heads with bosses superior, like your people who are working for you, or you may find a client that can, that comes into your, into your life or comes into your, into your reality and is just really testing you, stressing you, wearing you out. You may commit yourself to it, but it may come with a heavy burden. For example, I had a client, um, maybe a year and it, maybe it's two years now, um, who they were working with a client that had a lot of karma in their life and their job was to kind of help sort that client's drama out or those, those troubles out and that client's troubles quickly became that person's troubles and then it really put them in a big bind and they were terrified of where life was gonna was about to take them so these are things that it's like you really want to be really careful and cautious about what Saturn is teaching you making sure that I don't want to say that you're following the rules because if if following the rules means that you're not doing the right thing for you then that is a part of your karma here too really sit with yourself and see what Saturn retrograde through your 10th house 
is trying to teach you here and take it seriously because this is one of those signs where or one of those transits where you don't really have skeletons in a closet. Not that I would wish that on anybody, but it becomes very public. The 10th house is very, very public. So keep an eye on that. Having said that, Saturn transiting through Pisces in your 10th house can change your persona and the way that you not present yourself to the world, but um, yeah, the, the image, the legacy, the reputation that it is that you have there. Different than the first house which is how people see you. This is more about your, again, your reputation, your legacy, and that's not something that can be just tossed aside all willy-nilly. Moving on to the next sign, which is Cancer. Cancer rising, you're gonna be feeling this in your ninth house, which connects us to your beliefs, your philosophy. With this, it's really interesting because you may find that your spiritual practice, your faith, your philosophy may need to switch or pivot in some way. If you are someone who is deeply ingrained in your spiritual practice, you may start to feel like you need to go back to that and make that more of a seriousness. Like really take though, like go back to your ritual, your routine. For those of you guys that are really big on your spirituality as well, it's not that your faith isn't important and strong to you, but sometimes you, you do things more out of sense of duty and obligation and less out of heart and because you want to do it. Saturn retrograde through Pisces is going to want you to examine the relationship that is that you have with your faith and with your spiritual practice and if your heart is still is still in it. If not, you may need to take a, a break or kind of change uh your 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 routine and what that looks like for you so that you can fall back in love with your practices again for some of you guys you have lived and learned a lot whether it's through your own growth whether it's through travel and exposure to the rest of the world whatever however this growth is happening it can change shift your perspective in major major ways ways that you probably wouldn't have expected or seen coming Having said that, this may change, you know, your belief system, your faith. Um, interestingly enough, this can change what you are attracted to. For example, like books, what you're reading, whether it be horror books, such as myself, <laughs> I love a good horror novel, or self-help, or romance, or education, or magazines, it's the way that we are reading, like the knowledge that it is that we are gaining, whether it be through storytelling, fill in the blank, right? You may find that your tastes are changing when it comes to the information that is that you are consuming. Allow yourself to go along with that. For some of you guys, you may find that you are turning pleasure, like something that you are studying into a responsibility, into a burden, and you just tend to, you at this point with Saturn Retrograde, you're taking your glasses off, you're picking your yourself up and you're getting involved in other things that are going to teach you in a more hands-on approach versus knowledge like book knowledge and vice versa so cancer rising keep an eye out for that the next zodiac sign is leo connected to eighth house of intimacy this is where saturn is currently well saturn retrograde will be transiting through is your eighth house again intimacy and release and surrender and loss and even obsessions with this it's interesting because i don't know if you guys know this i teach this in sacred circle tarot sacred circle tarot school leo how saturn is connected to the devil card and what does that mean metaphorically symbolically spiritually theoretically and the symbolism you know not only of what it represents but why those symbols show up within that card and it's really really telling so if that's something that you're interested in then i'll link it down below but leo really pay attention to the binds that hold you or that you hold on to really pay attention to control your your need to control things why we hold on so tightly to certain things and what it means to you to hold on or something that you continue to let go of and you refuse to allow it into your life because you're fearing intimacy or depth or connection. If there are any obsessions or triggers or things that have a, you know, have that hold on you, 
this is where you want to work on really seeing what you are losing because of it and if it's worth it for you to continue in that same way. When it comes to intimacy, Leo, you may find, Leo rising, you may find that you are craving, needing, desiring intimacy in a really authentic way and there may be a lack of that, of exposure of that within your life. Saturn is tough with these types of energies because this is one of those signs that is very, very vulnerable. Or I should say this is one of the houses that are very, very vulnerable. And when we have a transit like Saturn or Pluto or Neptune or Uranus through the eighth house, it is very, it's a very sensitive place and that's a heavy planet, you know, to deal with. So um, do ask for help within this and help can look like counseling, it can look like AA meetings, it can look like phoning a friend, it can look like support groups, it can look like putting yourself and your heart out there once again, which can be really triggery and, you know, kind of confronting again those those feelings, those themes, but ultimately this is a beautiful time, a beautiful opportunity for you to empower yourself and to see how you have been disempowering yourself all along and it will give you greater control but also help you to be a little bit more comfortable with the parts of your life that it's it's time for you to surrender you know surrender into a little more so leo definitely let me know how this is impacting you if you want to share if not i'm not here to push pry or to pull teeth okay if you want to share i'm here though okay moving on to the next zodiac sign is virgo rising Virgo rising, kind of, you're going to be feeling this in your seventh house of relationships, partnerships, marriage, and also um, enemies, believe it or not. Sorry, I thought Franklin, speaking of partners, right? Um, my little homie, uh, Franklin, my dog, I thought he just ran into the office and poked his head in. Anyway, um, this can really challenge your relationships with your marriage partner if there are issues in the marriage and the commitment and the bond and in, in those relationships already this may 1000% maybe not 1000% um 500% bring up those old dirty patterns and <laughs> cycles kind of repeating themselves again so how do we deal with those problems now we're probably going to face them head on Remember that Saturn in Pisces is trying to teach us how not to bury our head in the sand and not to pretend like it doesn't exist. We kind of have to be, be mature and take what we've learned from that relationship, that marriage in the past and try to apply it now to learn from it, to grow from it and to somehow become better because of it. Easier said than done. If this is not just you, because again, when we're dealing with the seventh house, it's not really what we can control. It's what others choose to do. After the seventh is the eighth house, and this is us letting go of that control and realizing that maybe we're not powerless, but we don't need to succumb to this anymore. Like we don't need to be av available to this. We don't need to deal with this any longer. So Virgo rising, if you find that that is you in this situation, then this may have you questioning the commitment, the bond of the relationship itself, and if this is something that you would like to pursue and keep in your life. And whatever decision you decide at the end of this transit, I support it fully. If you are someone who is single, not in a relationship, not in a partnership, or don't want marriage, you or maybe you are looking for marriage, you may find that feeling of um, like isolation is or separation is something that is stabilizing for you or destabilizing for you either way you will do with it what you will <laughs> i'm not again these are very s specific readings for general for general audience so i can't from where i'm looking at right now on this day i'm not going to tell you exactly how you're going to feel because there, you have a lot of transits, like you have a lot of personal planets sitting in within your chart that are gonna change exactly how you are going to react to what's going on within your relationship and even where your opportunities and your pitfalls and your challenges lie. So for the most part, um, it's gonna be up to you to kind of reflect and see how 
you know, if this is going to make, is this going to create a wedge within you, something that you're going to want to look for, something that is teaching you how to better prepare yourself for partnership and a, a serious relationship. If you even see yourself as someone who's monog monogamous, monogamous, someone who wants to be with one person or multiple partners, it's going to be up to you. But ultimately, that's something that you're going to be exploring. The next zodiac sign is Libra, Libra rising. This is going to be falling in your sixth house of health, routine, regimen, the way your day to day lifestyle. If there are bits and pieces of your life that are just not for it for you right now, like they're not healthy, it's chaotic, it's destabilizing, it's not good for you. Saturn is going to teach you like, yo, this is not working out. Let's go ahead and begin to take it more seriously. Any type of routine ritual that is going to be better for you. Oftentimes, this can look like gym workouts, uh, going for walks, runs, something that you do consistently, but you don't overdo it. You don't punish yourself. With that, if there are aspects of your life um, Libra rising that are challenging or making your health jacked up or wonky, this zodiac, I'm sorry, this transit through your zodiac sign is going to teach you how, it's going to show you that this is the way that you're running yourself down. So think about this. If your day-to-day -day life is doing a lot of work or heavy lifting and then afterwards you try to go to the gym and then afterwards you try to go out with your friends and then afterwards you stay up all night um, watching netflix and scrolling through your phone on tiktok and then you fall asleep at like four o'clock in the morning and you wake up at 7 a.m and then you watch rinse and repeat you are going to feel the physical effects of how you have been draining your body and saturn is going to teach you that this is not something that you want to do now does this mean that it's going to punish you in a way that's going to put you in the hospital if you do it long enough then yes but if it's something that is a, a new lesson pay attention to how your body is reacting and how the energy of your day to day is either supplying energy for you or taking away that energy source and make pivots and take it seriously because a saturn transit retrograde or direct you don't want to have it come back and tell you the same lesson again and again, especially when it comes to your health, honey, because that is something that we do not go with. Okay, trust me on that. Scorpio, Scorpio, you are going to be feeling this transit through your fifth house of creativity, children, self-expression, and romance. This is one of those transits that can be tough because, or it can be really, really promising because you could easily turn your creative passion projects into, um, into something more serious, like turning a hobby into a small business for yourself or like income in some way. Also Scorpio, um, yeah, Scorpio, if you are dealing with um, stunted self-expression, creative expression, Saturn is going to teach you how to work through those blockages or to begin to see that you have blockages to begin with and start to kind of finagle and work, help you to work through them so that this isn't something that is stopping you from being creative, from expressing yourself. This is, a, to me, kind of reminds me of people who sign up for like Im improv classes with acting or something similar in, of that nature. And through that, they find themselves, interestingly, by reenacting these characters and expressing these emotions through this lens of a character that you may need to express for yourself. And that's a really interesting outlet if you're open to it. Um, if there's any blockages to creativity, uh, <clears throat> Scorpio, Saturn is going to teach you how to work through them to let go of them. If you are someone who has been all work and no play, Saturn is going to say, this is no way that we want to live our life. This is not the way that the universe sees us wanting to live our lives. How can we begin to employ the element of fun and joy and creative expression in our day-to-day -to -day experience? Like, let's start to really take that more seriously. Okay, Scorpio, you may need to um, reflect on this and ask for help or begin to take fun more seriously. And that doesn't mean that you make fun serious. It just means that you make fun, pleasure, joy and self-expression a priority. And it will definitely teach you. Also on the flip side, 
if you are someone who is always playing and always having a good time, you will see how Saturn retrograde is telling you that this is actually blocking abundance for you and opportunities for you to expand because you are you are seen as a joke. <laughs> like not to be so hard and harsh within that, but seriously, that's what Saturn will will really honestly teach you is like how do you balance you know, your fun and your joyful times, are you using joy, pleasure, drinking, whatever the case is, as a way to dissociate and to disconnect from the realities of the world? Is there a moment in time where it's time for you to buckle down and stop abusing, you know, your 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 play? Because you may be using play again to um, not handle the harshness of reality. So definitely something to explore. <clears throat> Sagittarius rising Scorpio is transiting through your fourth house I had to take a deep breath there <clears throat> and even a sip of water sorry guys hold on I've been talking all day okay Sagittarius Saturn is transiting <laughs> through your fourth house of home and family and stability this can be another one of those tricky, tricky transits because it can impact the home. It can impact mom, dad, well, mostly mom. It can impact your, your feeling of being nurtured, supported, feeling stable. So again, this is not to freak you out, but it is to prepare you because it can connect you again to those important people within your life. And you can even give them a warning, like, listen, um, you know, I was listening to Jess of Bahati Life, and this is what she was saying, and this would be a wonderful time, at least for the next five months, mom. Can you reduce your stress? Can you relax a little bit? Can you ease up? Because for the next five months, you know, technically you're going to be stressed. Like, the energy, the, the stress of these planets may not be something that you directly feel, but you are subconsciously consuming it, like you are under the influence of it. So that's always something that I like to look out for. It doesn't mean doom or gloom. However, sometimes it can explain why certain things happen that are difficult for us to deal with and process here as human beings on Earth, you know, when we look back and just be like, okay, Saturn transit, that made a lot of sense. It could be worse with a Pluto transit, but yeah, Saturn transit nonetheless. Anyway, keep an eye on the home, the family, stability, security for yourself. If there are aspects of yourself that don't feel safe, that don't feel stabilized, this is where we start to prioritize that and begin to repair it, uh, work on the structure of it, restructure it, rebuild the home environment. You may find that you may be downsizing your home or upgrading your home or signing a mortgage or exploring you know what is out there for you seriously seriously kind of take taking that into consideration whatever is going to make you feel more safe while you're here on earth which is really really important because this is not at all just you this is all of us uranus is transiting through taurus and taurus is just destabilizing things right the economy the money all of that is going up and down up and down i wouldn't be surprised to hear that you were wanting to scale back in some way kind of exploring your options and seeing if you want to go big or if you want to go smaller within your home environment if you are not moving you may find that you are decluttering organizing or taking your home like the the repairs of the home or the way that the the family like the family dynamic um you might be taking that more seriously and showing up for that in full Okay, so moving on to the next zodiac sign, that's Capricorn rising. Saturn is going to be transiting through your third house. This is connecting you to communication, your siblings, your brother or sister, short trips, and travel, and like the neighborhood. So with this, really be careful with your, with your siblings if you have them. They may be making promises, but at the end of the day, they're not going to be able to fulfill it. Anytime when we have Saturn here, anything that is like promised to us, it's just kind of like... I know you you mean well by this like I don't want to throw anybody under the bus but like it's like you mean because it also connects to communication so you may hear of like a sibling or something someone but oftentimes a sibling kind of making promises for the future by the end of the day I wouldn't expect it to fulfill you know because it doesn't have the commitment 
They may not necessarily recognize it in the moment. You don't need to call this person out, but it's just something to expect for yourself to just see like, okay, I don't know if I necessarily see this person kind of like actually following through. You may have some tension with your siblings if that is something that you're dealing with or some issues that you guys need to resolve within yourself. If there's a dynamic there, you might see that. Any type of short trips or revisiting the neighborhood or like activities that are going on around you in your neighborhood are things that you may find yourself revisiting, going back to, committing yourself to, whether it be class pass, which remind me to share with you guys my links for class pass. It's basically, this is not sponsored, but I, I would get a cut of this. It's like, you get like 20 classes. This is definitely something to explore but you get like 20 classes. My friends and I are all on this. You get like 20 free classes or 30 classes or credits or something that you can use for classes that are in your neighborhood, like locally in your neighborhood. And then I get those classes <laughs> if you use my um, sign up code, but it actually ends up pairing out because I, I have a yoga studio that I go to pretty regularly. And I was paying like $22 for each of, each of the classes, but with the class pass, I would put down, like I would pay like $30 or I forget how much. And it would break down to like two, at the end of the day, it would end up being like $2 a class for that month. And I, it, cause these types of things, taking care of your mind, body, soul, spirit, it can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. So remind me to send you guys the links for that. Um, cause I will, I will forget, but either way, <laughs> Capricorn, I'm so sorry, but this may be something that you are recommitting yourself to is those activities and exercises or classes that you can find locally, which also brings me back to class pass. Like if there's like one studio, like your passes aren't stuck on just that one class or that one studio, it could be applied to massages. It could be applied to like glass blowing classes. So random, but like seriously, um, anything. It's not just like, okay, you're stuck with just here. You could use it anywhere. Also, you can use it as like credits at the gym, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway. Okay. So anyway, Capricorn, sorry. <laughs> um, you may find yourself recommitting back to classes in your neighborhood and taking it more seriously and investing in it, which I'm not saying this because I just said what I said, but I highly recommend it because that's again, what Saturn is teaching you. Having said that, um, you may find yourself, uh, for some people here, I've seen this with like, I don't say road rage, but needing to kind of like slow down in your neighborhood to be more cognizant, to be more aware. Also like neighborhood associations, HOA, <laughs> those types of things tend to kind of like resurface uh, during the Saturn Saturn retrograde or Saturn Saturn moments because it's the ways that something within that environment tries to restrict us or we try to restrict it. So keep an eye out for those types of issues and communication. Also, look at how what you're saying, if it's landing with people or do you need to shift and change your way of communication so that other people can understand your intention and exactly what it is that you're trying to say. So Capricorn, definitely keep your eyes open for that and let me know how you fare with uh, Capricorn. Why do I keep saying Capricorn? Um, because Saturn actually rules your sign Capricorn and also we're talking about you, but, and also I've been talking all day, but Saturn, how Saturn retrograde through Pisces is going to be impacting you. Keep me in the loop, bestie. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to the next Zodiac sign, we have Aquarius. Wow, Aquarius, you guys have been going through it. <laughs> you really have. So thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, condolences, condolences, Saturn is transiting through your second house of what is valuable to you, what is important to you, your money, your spending. Aquarius, you are going to have to have a really come to Jesus moment on where your money is going, on your income, or how you are receiving your finances, your resources, because what is important to you and what is of value to you has shifted in a way that feels like a responsibility or a weight on your shoulders. And how are you going to be able to manage all of that? Not to put that pressure on you, Aquarius, but like that's some real that you need to really sit with today or during this Capricorn. Why do I keep saying Capricorn? I'm sorry. I said it like one time and then I'm stuck. During Saturn retrograde through Pisces in your Aquarius rising sign. Okay, this is tough because, well, it could be tough. It can show again like what your priorities are or like you're spending maybe limited or 
your expenses might have gone up or something is happening within your life, Aquarius rising, to make you kind of have to shift where your priorities and your values are going right now. And Saturn has to do a lot with our responsibilities, our commitment, our duty, our obligation, and the way that it is that we need to show up seriously as a mature, effective fill in the blank. So um, if you need to cut back on your spending, if you need to get a second job, these are things that you may need to explore, if at all. And Aquarius, if not, you may find that you are being cut free of uh, something to free you up to spend more time that may impact your money, not necessarily in a bad way at all. It could be very positive. It could bring you a lot of freedom, a lot of opportunity, a lot of... Um, you know, things that it opens up the door for you to kind of like explore new things. So keep your eyes open for that um, and let me know what is important to you right now, if you would like. Okay, Pisces, last but not least, you poor thing, Pisces. I can only imagine if I was a Pisces person and I was like obsessed or I was always checking in with the, the zodiac signs, like astrological check-ins and like just knowing that you're the last of the zodiac. <laughs> the zodiac like there's 11 signs before you you're the 12th one and you're just waiting patiently for your time talk about martyr and self-sacrifice pisces you poor thing my heart goes out to you luckily for you i'm gonna really try to remember that there's timestamps, so you can just zoom in and then i also i'm gonna set intention that in the future any other video or information that i do or anybody else here on the youtube channel like youtube platform just youtube as a whole not just me but everybody that they have timestamps so that you pisces aren't just sitting there waiting for your turn because that really freaking sucks and i just feel a lot of compassion for you right now pisces anyway saturn is transiting and going retrograde in your first house of self yikes question mark <laughs> maybe you know um basically this is really challenging you to redefine who are you now and how others perceive you if that even matters at all you may have some knee-jerk reactions to the world and your stress and how you are feeling that you may need to reflect on and change because it could be bringing in blessings or blockages depending on the situation for example how are people, if it matters to you, Pisces, how are people perceiving you? Are do you, What is the common denominator? What are people commonly saying about you? Are they saying that you're intimidating? Are they saying that you're lost in the sauce? Are they saying that you're crazy? Are they saying that you're psycho? Are they saying that you are out of touch? I don't know why I'm starting off with negative things, but there's something here to learn and to apply to yourself, if you decide to change yourself, then fine. But if you decide to reflect on it and just be like, okay, this is a reflection of who I am or this is my intention and it mirrors that perfectly, then we're all, we're all good. However, there may be something that you may need to shift and pivot. Let me give myself as an example. For the longest time, I would be out in the world living my life, especially when the days when I would be like, not club hopping but like you know in the neighborhood right at, at different bars and stuff i'm not really a drinker pisces but pisces rising but um i really like that environment because i like when people are letting their hair down and relaxing however i started hearing again and again and again like oh when i met you i thought you were stuck up when i first met you i thought you were the b word when i met you when i first met you i thought you were i thought you didn't like me then, so there's that category. And then I had a lot of people, it was like 50-50 here, right? Being like, I met her and I loved her. I felt like I could pour my heart out to her. I met her and I felt like you were my best friend and then we could just talk for hours and hours and hours. And those two are not necessarily true or inaccurate. It was the people's impression of me. And I sometimes I stick with it. It is what it is. And then I started realizing that, you know, if people are seeing me as stuck up or angry or intimidating or whatever the case is, I realized I was kind of holding my eyebrows together. Like I have RBF, hardcore, especially when I'm out in public because all that energy can be a little overwhelming and exhausting. And I'm an introvert. And if I'm out in public, I'm probably enjoying myself, but sometimes, you know, introverts, right? So I started realizing like, okay, let me 
relax my face a little bit and make sure that I'm walking around with a smile on my face. And it kind of changed the perception that others had of me. Does it matter at the end of the day? Not really, not really, not totally, but does it make a difference? Does it make an impact? Yes, and I wanted to make sure that I was responsible for the energy that I brought. Not that I needed to change anything, but making sure that people knew that um, they weren't feeling any type of way when they met me for the first time. And first impressions do mean something. Now that is superficial AF, but also think about like your reactions to things and if it is being uh, translated over to the rest of the world, if that is something that means anything to you. Pisces rising, you may also find that you are redefining yourself and rediscovering yourself or shifting yourself in some way, especially when it comes to your identity or your appearance. You may be wanting to mature. You may, may be wanting to change, you know, your, your wardrobe, your hair, your makeup or your bag in a way that reflects your growth and who it is that you are right now. And don't ever overlook the, the magnitude and the weight and the difference it makes when you change your appearance. And the ascendant sign, which is what Saturn retrograde is retrograding closer or over for you, Pisces rising, um, represents like again how we appear to the world. So you may be again switching up your appearance in some great way. You might be deciding like an H&M trip is in the works for you and you just want to get a whole lot of button button downs and I'm here for it <laughs> or boho gear girl I don't know do you so having said that guys uh thank you so much for hanging out with me for allowing me to pull your chart for uh, having this moment to vibe I'm gonna get this video up for you as soon as possible I also have the extended readings linked down for you below so make sure that you check those out in the meantime make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.